Thank you. Um, I'd like to start by thanking the organizers for selecting this abstract um, and allowing us to present some of our work. Um, so I'm an integrative physiologist in New Zealand um, and have been interested in neural control of the circulation for a reasonably long time now. Um, and this is really our first foray into how mechanical unloading might alter neural control of the kidney in particular. Um, um, I don't think I need to kind of reiterate this to this audience, um, but really to kind of mention again that acute kidney injury really is quite a common and serious complication during cardiogenic shock. Um, and I think we now know from some clinical studies that the use of the impeller can delay this progression of AKI. Um, and people have shown that there is a reduction in renal resistive index, um, which is kind of an indirect measure of perfusion of the kidney. Uh, and people have also shown that after use of the impeller, your glomerular filtration rate, or GFR, improves. Um, but apart from those two findings, it's not really that clear, at least to me, what the mechanisms are as by which AKI is, progression is delayed. Um, and within this context, really, the role of the nurse of the kidney, or primarily the role of the sympathetic nerves of the kidney, uh, have really not been explored at all. Um, just to talk up step back a bit and talk about in a global sense. We know that all organs, in particular the heart and the kidney, which is the ones that I'm interested in, receive a dense innervation of autonomic nerves, and in particular, sympathetic nerve in them. Um, they are also afferent nerves that relay information about different indexes of organ function that goes up back to the brainstem. Um, but we're really, today, just going to be focused on efferent sympathetic nerve, primarily to the kidney. The reason we think that renal sympathetic nerve activity, or RSNA, that I'm abbreviating, is important is because a lot of previous studies have shown that changes in renal sympathetic nerve activity can directly influence sodium reabsorption and therefore change blood volume. Uh, increases in renal sympathetic nerve activity can directly increase plasma renin release. Um, and of course, um, sympathetic innervation of the kidney can directly alter conductance of the renal artery uh, and thereby perfusion. We know that the nerves of the kidney can modulate kidney function, but under what circumstances will they be altered during either cardiogenic shock or during impeller support? Um, and really, there are a number of mechanisms. I'm just going to highlight three. We know that renal sympathetic nerve activity is under tight regulation of the arterial barrel reflex. And given that you can change arterial pressure, that's one mechanism by which we might get changes in renal sympathetic drive. Um, we know that there are a number of afferents in the heart that really signal when there is ischemia. Um, and there is kind of a nice connection between afferents in the heart and efferents in the kidney. Um, and that might be one mechanism by which um, either cardiogenic shock or reversal with the impeller might influence renal sympathetic nerve activity. Um, and finally, even just within the kidney, we know there are afferents that sense uh, perfusion of the kidney. Um, and so there might be a renal renal reflex where afferents in the kidney can directly influence efferent sympathetic drive to the same or the other kidney. So irrespective, really, of the mechanisms by which um, RSNA can be modulated, um, our main question was what happens to renal sympathetic nerve activity, because no one has really directly recorded this. Um, with the hypothesis that mechanical unloading with the impeller will reduce renal sympathetic nerve activity. So how do we test this? Um, we have an anesthetized instrumented ovine sheep model. Um, so these are all adult sheep, all female ewes um, that are intubated, and we maintain them under isofluorine anesthesia. Um, and initially, we have a number of instrumentation procedures that allow us to measure the variables we are particularly interested in. Um, the first one that we're interested in is in sympathetic nerve activity. Um, so nerve activity, and I'll show some examples in a little bit, but really is uh, depolarizations uh, in nerves that go along to the renal artery, and that depolarization has a greater probability of release of norepinephrine, as well as other neurotransmitters to cause vasoconstriction. Um, the way we record this, and there's multiple ways of doing it, but we have these really fine um, needle electrodes that we kind of impale the nerve with. In the sheep, the nerve is big enough that we can actually measure by impaling the nerves with our electrodes. 
and effectively we can maintain a reasonably good nerve activity for the remainder of the protocol. Um, we also use a transonic flow probe um, that records beat to beat renal blood flow um, and we've got a Miller pressure probe uh, through the femoral artery just to measure arterial pressure. Once we've got some baseline measurements, um, we then under fluoroscopic guidance put in a catheter into the coronary artery um, and similar to the previous talk, we do uh, microembolizations um, where effectively really tiny 50 micron beads uh, are put primarily through the circumflex. Um, we see reasonably robust changes in the ECG. So usually this ST segment depression or elevation and usually is associated with a decrease in mean arterial pressure. Um, we kind of follow it through for about 20 minutes and if pressure hasn't fallen enough, um, we continue with smaller doses of the microembolization beads until we get a consistent at least 15 millimeter drop in blood pressure. Um, once that's done, um, we then implant uh, the impeller through a crowded axis, um, so that it sits in the left ventricle. Um, and once it's in there, we are randomly um, putting the impeller CP at different pump levels from P1 right up to P6. And in the middle, we also have a P0. We have the P0 both with the impeller in the ventricle, but also at some stage we pull it out just to ensure that there's no backflow um, and then compare the changes that occur in all of these variables with the different pump levels. Okay, so what do we see? Um, and this is just showing some raw data of what the activity looks like. So the top panel is baseline ECG. The second one from the left is baseline neural sympathetic nerve activity. So effectively, there are these depolarizations that occur positive and negative, and effectively, there's a depolarization occurring in multiple nerve fibers going to the kidney. Um, we know that they are primarily efferent renal sympathetic nerve activity because these depolarizations occur at certain times of the cardiac cycle, so they are under somewhat tight baroreflex control. Um, we're recording baseline blood pressure and baseline renal blood flow using the ultrasonic probe. Um, just immediately post embolization, you can see just in the raw nerve activity, there's a decrease in blood pressure, but really the nerve activity becomes a little bit more chaotic, and effectively there's this large increase in nerve activity. It isn't that novel because people have shown that before, um, but in mean data, you can see that within the first 30 minutes, we see a big drop in mean arterial pressure. Um, and quite a significant increase in renal sympathetic nerve activity as well as significant reduction in renal blood flow. With the impeller in, again, this is maybe not new news, but you can see there's a clear increase in mean arterial pressure in the top panels uh, at P0, P3, P6, um, as well as a tendency for perhaps an increase in renal blood flow. What's really interesting to note is that for renal blood flow, you get an increase in the diastolic flow um, associated with perhaps a decrease in the systolic flow, um, which is why overall perhaps mean renal blood flow doesn't change. And we can talk about that in a little bit. Um, and here are just some mean data, again, showing in N equals eight animals. Um, with the impeller CP, we can produce reasonably a significant increase in mean arterial pressure um, that goes up um, the higher the pump speed, um, and that's associated with the decrease in pulse pressure. We also calculated renal resistive index. Um, now, clinically, this is calculated with the Doppler, where uh, people look at f uh, velocity um, of flow, whereas we have measured it off the ultrasonic um, flow meter directly. But in either case, we can see that um, the baseline renal resistive index at P0, so at the, um, at the start of the experiment, the renal resistive index is uh, significantly elevated compared to control. Um, and the impeller pump effectively brings it down very close to control levels, which is what would be in a control cohort or before the embolization. Um, there is a tendency for renal blood flow to increase, but this did not um, changed significantly, um, and we tried to see if this was just individual variation, and there were some animals where renal blood flow does increase, uh, and some where it clearly doesn't, although the renal resistive index is clearly diminished in all of them. What happens to renal sympathetic nerve activity? And here's just showing some mean data on the right, um, which is a little bit hard to see, but when quantified, we see a clear sustained decrease 
and renal sym sympathetic nerve activity that seems to be dependent on uh, the pump speed. So effectively, the greater the pump speed, we can get a significant reduction in renal sympathetic nerve activity. Um, this is, I guess, a novel finding, but really it suggests, at least to me, that part of the reason um, why you might have delay in progression of AKI might be potentially because of this decrease in renal sympathetic nerve activity. We also tried to look at what might be the mechanism of this decrease in renal sympathetic nerve activity. This is perhaps a little bit of a complicated graph, but I'll quickly run through it. So during cryogenic shock, we can test the baroreflex control of sympathetic nerve activity. So the red line is effectively showing you the change in renal sympathetic nerve activity as you increase blood pressure. And usually, if you increase blood pressure enough, that curve comes down right down to zero, where effectively there are no bursts present. What was really interesting was um, the two lines at the top effectively show the change in diastolic pressure before and after the impella was put in. So for each of the individual animals, we can calculate an expected change, um, a predicted or expected change in renal sympathetic nerve activity. And really, the predicted is quite small, whereas the observed change is quite large, which suggests that the decrease in renal sympathetic nerve activity, we think, cannot just be due to arterial baroreflex effect. Just take home messages, uh, and the main primary one is the use of the impeller in cardiogenic shock reduces renal sympathetic nerve activity, and we think it's by mechanisms other than the arterial baroreflex. Um, and I'd just like to acknowledge all of the other people who were involved in the study, um, as well as a biomed um, for the grant, as well as coming and help us um, set up use of the impeller. Thank you very much.